Hello everyone, this is Dr. Alexander Shapsis. I'm excited to introduce to you Julie Litvak, who is a physician assistant, a master herbalist, and a functional medicine provider. Julie, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Absolutely. How did you get into functional medicine? So this is goes back, I've been you know, a conventional medicine provider, uh, worked in the emergency room and intensive care units in hospital as a physician assistant. But about 10 years ago, through some of my own lessons and just watching patients being band-aided and not really understanding the cause of why they're ill, um, I became really interested in understanding the body at a different level. So started reading a little here and there, nutrition, herbs, you know, uh, vitamins, and then slowly I started to come up on this whole area of medicine that has been untouched by conventional providers up until most recently. And so my journey kind of took me there. Um, I ended up uh, going to school in Utah for my master herbalism degree. I really wanted to understand um, how we can utilize nature and plants as medicine and food as medicine and kind of took off. That's fantastic. So I guess that's a nice segue into introducing our viewers into what is functional medicine. So you hear a lot of words and honestly when people go into it it gets pretty confusing. I, I call it like a, like a jungle, right? Like real thick and some light comes through here and there but it, it's hard to see and you'll hear words like functional, integrative, holistic, naturopathic and so there are different layers of it. Um, I guess I would say functional medicine for me because functional medicine is the function of the body and what is the root causes. So it's more of a root cause medicine approach. So it's not the what are the symptoms or how are, you know, but it's how the symptoms came to be and what is the underlying cause of those symptoms coming through. And, you know, a lot of times they're not really looked for. Sometimes they're really hard to find. Um, but that's kind of what I dedicated my practice to is understanding how people got to where they are now and understanding where it came from and kind of digging back into that. That's fantastic. Well, I'm going to touch on something that's near and dear to me and as a gastroenterologist and a lot of times I will see patients who are afflicted by IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So in the realm of gastroenterology, irritable bowel syndrome is one thing. However, functional medicine views it slightly differently. And I found over the years of practice that um, there's, it's, a, it's a perfect merger between functional medicine and allopathic medicine, which is a conventional Western medicine, um, and herbal medicine that could allow patients um, basically a light of day and a relief of their symptoms. What is your take on irritable bowel syndrome from a functional standpoint? So my functional standpoint is that that is not a real diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So it's, it's basically a description of symptoms, right? So people have all these symptoms and for the most part, there's no obvious reason for it, right? Structurally, they'll do colonoscopies or endoscopies. They'll do the blood test. They'll go through these series of testing and nothing can be found. So they're left with the diagnosis of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And so there is no identifiable cause. And so it stays as that diagnostic, you know, wording, but really it's just symptoms. Like what, there has to be a cause. And so through the functional approach of it, a lot of times the cause is unbalanced stress levels, poor diet intake, severe dehydration, um, traumatic issues, even sometimes parasitic infections, right? So there's all these other things that um, the allopathic field doesn't really know how to look for. It's not that they don't want to, they just, they, they're not, they don't know where to look. And so in the functional space, there's now been some ways where we can identify it. And even when we can't identify it, simply, chewing your food better, drinking more water, and having a really great balanced diet with some exercise and some mindful, you know, meditation and eating patterns, and it's resolved. So, you know, that's kind of the way I see it, is that if something's happening in the body as a whole, and these symptoms are telling you like, hey, I'm not happy, right? Like the body's not happy. I agree with you. Well, lots of times I view irritable bowel syndrome sort of as a label diagnosis, and you're right. There are 
actually factually diagnosable causes. For example, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which wow. is frequently overlooked condition, which is easily diagnosable, and there are readily available tests and treatments available for these patients, and uh, many a times patients are, I call it, mislabeled mm -hmm. uh, with this diagnosis, when in fact uh, there are root causes that are readily identifiable. So how do you battle the IBS? What do you offer to your patients? So, and I agree, SIBO is a big one in there. And, um, and even just people like on chronic um, PPIs or acid blocking medication, often that will cause this really low stomach acid levels. They'll have undetected H. pylori for some time. They'll have issues with the processing and digesting their food and later developing SIBO and then getting a diagnosis of IBS rather than the background. So that's kind of where I start, right? I started seeing like, what can we figure out here? Um, Blood work is a great way for me to start to understand some of it, and we can test things in some of the more of the comprehensive and advanced blood panels. So we can look at your digestive capacity, we could look at how your gallbladder is functioning, liver functions, even things like thyroid issues can be a cause of like Absolutely. slow digestion that later leads to things like IBS. So really checking those things. Um, a lot of conventional doctors will just check two things of a full thyroid panel, and we here do not do that. We look at a full thyroid panel because there's so many undiagnosed thyroid issues that could have been seen earlier on, but most doctors wait until just that last number, which is the TSH, gets you know twisted out, so out of range. So I think those are that's really where I start. Then I also love my you know some of the um, functional tests like the GI map, right? That's a big one for me. And so these are comprehensive stool tests that um, you send out to a lab, and you get like a nine-page report that talks about that will tell you about your good bacteria, your bad bacteria, the H. pylori. Sometimes there's it's not diagnostic for SIBO, but it can give you clues on SIBO. Um, I'd often send them to you to get SIBO testing, <laughs> right? And so to understand like, hey, if we find H. pylori, poor digestive capacity, SIBO, all these things, we have a groundwork of where to start. And then approaching patients like that, it's a whole body approach because a lot of these people, they have, uh, you know, especially living in New York, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you're on the run and you're on the go and it, it's really, it just becomes so super difficult to like sit down and, you know, get into this calm, relaxed state where digestion happens, right? Because when you're not calm, when you're in that fight or flight, you're in that, you know, stress, anxiety, go, 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 your body can't digest, your body can't process nutrients, you can't absorb nutrients, and you can't heal. So just starting there is really how I approach, like teaching people how to like eat consciously and, you know, meditate and go outside and enjoy the fresh <laughs> air, simple things, right? Simple things and like get good fiber and, you know. Yeah, diet. people are forgetting to have meals. They're, they're right. having snacks and on a go food, which is not the way that our bodies were designed. Uh, just to touch base on that proton pump inhibitor use, the anti-acid use, the surreptitious anti-acid use, really leads to change in microbiome. We've known that for a while, and that really sort of, sort of stirs up that entire microbiome change. And I know that you test with the GI maps, which I think is an excellent tool, personally. Yeah. It's almost like a DNA analysis of your microbiome. That's what I call it in my mind. So I think that's generally a very um, excellent tool as an addition. To, um, to whatever we can offer to our patients conventionally or um, through uh, the use of functional medicine. What are some of the exciting parts of, um, fun of you practicing functional medicine? What do you like to practice? What type of patient do you love seeing? I know you love to see them all. I love to see them all, but <laughs> I really, uh, you know what, the GI system is really, I mean, I think it, I'm not. I'm going to quote Hippocrates here. Is you know all disease begins in the gut, and I Amen. truly, <laughs> I, <agree. laughs> I surely believe that. And so somebody will come to me with a skin issue, and I go to the gut. Somebody will come to me with a hormonal issue, and I go to the gut. Somebody will come to me with uh, you know stress, anxiety issue, and I will go to the gut. So really, the GI system is where I really want to focus in um, where I have been focusing in on my practice and because I really find that most things that start to go awry in the body will start there but I do I love helping women especially women that hit that that point in their lives of perimenopause it's so not really paid attention to 
Um, doctors are not, they don't really, like, we know it's happening, but there's no real treatment. And so while I don't do full hormonal replacement, I do a lot of herbal hormonal support. Um, and I love hormone testing. I use the Dutch test quite a bit. And so guiding women through that change and perimenopause and menopause and even women with like estrogen dominance, that's another place that I really enjoy. But even in those women, I go to look in the gut. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So fantastic. What I can tell you is that you've done fantastic work. I really appreciate you coming on here. And uh, this is Julie Leitvak. And I would like for you to schedule an appointment with her. We're going to put a phone number at the bottom and uh, visit her. Uh, she's part of Wellness Boost, and she's incredibly, incredibly talented and knowledgeable. I'll hope to see you there.